Yeah, and Fremantle's the next club down the list, and they've got an all-West Australian uh, draft hall of four in the national draft at least. So um, starting off with Heath Chapman in the first round at pick uh, 14, great pick uh, in my opinion, uh, obviously a local boy as we mentioned. And um, you know while he's sort of a key defender and, and Fremantle has a host of them um, already on the list, I think he just adds a different dimension in the way he attacks from defence and um, you know, he could even develop into a wingman with his running capacity and just his attacking sort of traits from the back half. Um, moving down, they obviously moved up a little bit to pick up Nathan O'Driscoll. Um, you know, the, the boy from Perth, a real sort of cheeky character, but one who works so hard on the field. Um, you know, you're going to have to expect that sort of defensive uh, pressure and work rate from him. And, um, you know, then they got their two NGAs really late on in the draft, which they would have loved at pick 50 and 54 with the bids. So, um, yeah, absolute bargains, really. They were probably top 30, top 35 talents uh, overall. And, um, yeah, just bargains, easy matches for, for the Dockers. They were some of the quickest to reply with the bids there. So um, the only other one, obviously, Josh Treacy in the in the rookie draft at pick seven there. Um, might even be the sort of Jesse Hogan replacement of sorts. Um, has that sort of big size as a key forward target. Can even sort of roam up the ground. And I know he's improving his running capacity and, and sort of that sort of... Know, bursting speed and things like that, but he's got really good presence, good tackling, pressure for a tall, and uh, Bailey Banfield was the other one there, just relisted. So, 